Hi, in this video you'll learn how to construct individual and moving range control charts. And then we're going to use those charts to determine if there's any out of control points on the process that we're studying. So here's the example. The table below has 20 observations on concentration for the output of a chemical process. The observations are taken at one hour intervals. We want to set up control charts for individuals and moving ranges. In the moving ranges, we want to construct the, um, the chart for two consecutive points. So here's the situation. Let me go through the table here. Um, observation 1, um, the concentration measurement is 102. Uh, observation 1 is made at the first hour. At the second hour, um, here is our second observation on concentration. It's 94.8. Observation 3, 98.3, observation 4 at the 4th hour, 98.4, and so on. So for the 20-hour um, time period, we have 20 different measurements, and these are the measurements that we're going to put on the individual's chart. The other chart is a moving range chart. We want some way to assess the variability in the process. And we're going to do this with a moving range, and we're doing it between two points, two consecutive points. So the moving range in this case, we look at the first observation and the second observation, and we take the absolute value of the difference between these two points. So the difference between 102 and 94.8 in absolute value is 7.2. So that's going to be our first moving range value. Um, our next moving range value is the absolute value of the difference between 94.8 and 98.3, and that is 3.5. And so the difference between 98.3 and 98.4 in absolute value is 0.1. And we could continue down the list, and we're going to have 19 moving ranges. And these are the values then that we plot on the moving range chart. So let's go ahead and talk about how we're going to set up these control charts. Um, for the X control chart or individual control chart, the actual center line is just going to be X bar, which is just the, the average of all the individual values. So let's go back a, a slide, and you can see all we're doing is taking 102, 94.8, 98.3. I'm going to average all these values, and that will be the center of my individual control chart. So um, this will be the center, and I already calculated this before I started the video. This is actually 99.1, okay? And now we need the upper and lower control limits of the individual's chart. And, of course, we're going to start at the center line, and then we're going to either go up or down three standard deviations for the individuals. Now, I put a hat on sigma because we don't know the true standard deviation of the process, and in this case, we're going to have to estimate it. Now, there's various estimates for sigma hat when you're looking at a control chart, but this one in particular that we're going to use, um, there's a relationship be between sigma hat and MR bar. And what it is, in fact, is MR bar, which is going to be the average of the moving ranges, divided by the um, unbiasing constant D2. And D2 we're going to get from a table with variable control chart constants. So I actually have already com um, computed MR bar. Let's go back again. Um, so here's MR1, we'll say MR2, MR3. We'll get 19 um, moving ranges, and then I average those 19 values, and that's what's going to be MR bar. So let's go back down. I've already done that. Um, in this case, uh, MR bar, let me just tell you what that is. Um, that is 2.59. Okay. And I suppose why I'm here, I might as well find D2. D2 is for two consecutive points. So on the table with variable control charts, I'm going to use N equal 2 to determine D2. So let's go back to these control chart constant tables. Um, so for n equals 2, we see that d sub 2 is 1.128. And so that's the constant I need um, for my calculation of sigma hat. So going back up here, d2 is going to be 1.128. So we're in good shape, really, right now. Let's just do a little plug in and chug, and we'll have our upper and lower control limits. So um, x bar was 99.1. Uh, plus or minus 3 times uh, 2.59 divided by 1.128, which yields um, the upper control limit as uh, 105.99 and the lower control limit as approximately uh, 
0.21. So again, for the upper control limit, I'm adding, and for the lower, I'm subtracting. And so on the individual control chart, our center line is going to be 99.1. This is going to be the upper control limit, and this will be the lower control limit. So actually, let's take a look at that individual chart. I made this in Minitab. Um, before I uh, started making this video, Minitab actually calls the individual chart an I chart, not an X chart. So that's why you see IMR chart. Um, so these are just the individual points that we saw in the first table. This is the center line X bar of the individual chart. Here's the upper control limit and here's the lower control limit as we had computed. Down here is the moving range chart. Notice that we only have 19 observations. So um, the absolute value of the difference between 0.1 and 0.2 we had said was 7.2. Um, between 1 or 2 and 3 was 3.5. Between, um, so that was 1 and 2, 2 and 3. 3 and 4 was 0.01 or 0.1. Um, and so here, these are just all the moving range values. Oh, we already did say, right, that MR bar, if I averaged all the moving ranges, was 2.59. So now I just need to calculate the upper and lower co control limits. So let's go back up to this slide. Um, the center line of the moving range chart will be MR bar, which is just the average of the moving ranges. And similarly to what I uh, did for getting the upper and lower control limits of the individual's chart, uh, we have to do some substituting and we have to use some um, unbiasing constants, but instead of going through the work, I will just tell you that the upper control limit will turn out to be um, capital D4 times MR bar. And then the lower control limit is D3 times MR bar. And again, uh, we're doing this for two consecutive uh, individual points to, c to compute the moving range. So when I get these actual um, constants from my table, they're going to be for n equals 2. So let's go back down here to the control chart table. For n equals 2, um, d4 will be 3.267, and for d3 is actually 0 for n equals 2. So let's just go back up here again. So this is going to be um, d4 is 3.267 times mr bar, which is 2.59, yields uh, 8.46 approximately. And down here we said D3 was 0 times 2.59, which is just 0. So let's go and see how this looks on the moving range chart. So here again is our upper control limit. Uh, this was D4 times MR bar, 8.461, and then the lower control limit was 0. So here we are, we have a really nice control chart and we're looking for any points that are out of control. In this case, any points that are beyond three standard deviations from the center line. And you see we have no points that are out of control on the individual chart. And in the same, we have no points out of control on the moving range chart. So I don't need to remove any points in and recompute these control limits. So we're good to go right now. But I just want to remind you, if we did have an out of control point, we would move, we would remove it just from the construction of the updated control limits. But in this case, we don't have to worry about removing any of these points. So um, I hope that you've gained a little bit, perhaps, confidence in the idea of what individual and moving range charts are. Um, the individual chart, you're just plotting the individual values, and I think uh, it's, it's fairly clear how you get the upper and lower control limits for the individual's chart. The other chart, which may be t new to people, is the moving range chart. We're, we're looking at the absolute value of the difference between two consecutive points. Um, the center of the moving range chart, again, is the average of the moving ranges, and that, again, we, we do have formulas for finding the upper and lower control limits, which can easy, easily be derived just as we did for the um, individual control chart. So I hope that you've enjoyed looking at this video and uh, understanding how to create these charts. And uh, I think we'll look perhaps at another chart or two. All right, thank you.